the WOCA. Ocala. Five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I'm not alone when I tell you that I've been to the cemetery a few times. I can remember going to, uh, after my grandfather died, I would take my, I was about 19 years old, I would take my grandmother to the cemetery and I would wait there with her while she uh, said a prayer and, and, and was very silent and it was always so solemn and so sad. And now, and now she's, you know, her body is, is with his. And not too far away, my own, uh, my dad first passed, and his body is not too far away in that same cemetery. My mother is right next to him, or her body anyway, and my sister's body also. So people pass. It's part of life. It's hard, but it's part of life. Our next guest uh, has written a really positive book on remembering those who have passed, and she, my goodness, has her her stories to tell. Allison Gilbert is on the phone. She's an Emmy award-winning multi-platform journalist, Joe. I see that. Listen to this. She covered 911 and was nearly killed by falling debris. Mm. Oh, wow. She's the founder of something called Parentless Parents. She's a consultant to the National September 11th Memorial and Museum. Hope we can pick her brain about that a little yes, bit. Yes, definitely. I know that's not the focus of the book, but I want to ask her. Uh, she's the author of her series of My Journey to Prevent Ovarian Cancer, her decision to surgically remove her ovaries. She's a contributor to, listen to this. Here we go, here we go. You, the New York Times, The Daily Beast, The Huffington Post, CNN, ABC, Fox, MSNBC, ABC, National Public Radio, and her book is called Past and Present, Past, as in Passed Away, P-A-S-S-E-D, Keeping Memories of Loved Ones Alive. Allison Gilbert. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, good morning. What a great voice you have, by the way. <laughs> well, I just put on my nicest voice for you guys. You just, oh. you just you sound so here? positive. Doesn't she sound positive? I, yeah, up, uplifting. Yeah, uplifting. Yes, uplifting. Yes. Where are you calling hey, from? what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Life gives you lemons? you got to turn it into lemonade. If I listen to you long enough, I can pick out your accent. That doesn't sound completely oh, neat. Okay. That's not New York. That's, going. that's further west, right? No, I'm definitely New York. You I'm are New York. 100% New York. New Yorker. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. All right. Well, I didn't listen to you long enough. I would have got it eventually. Yeah, foot and mouth. I do love me some Florida. I love coming down there. You guys have the best state. It is just paradise. Well, anytime you're in the area, you're welcome to visit the studio. <laughs> yeah. Where are, you, where are you right now? Are you in Manhattan? I am. I'm in the middle of my book tour. I have a few days home, which is a really great opportunity to regroup with my family, and then I'm on the road again. Um, starting Monday, I go off to California, and I just came back from Chicago and Minneapolis, and so it's been a little bit of a whirlwind to get to see my kids and say hello and then take off to uh, San Francisco and L.A. Uh, next week. How are your children little? How old are your children? Um, they're not so little. They're very happy to get rid of me. They're teenagers. So oh, they okay. Come home, <laughs> you know, make sure they're behaving, which of course they, you know, normally are. It's all good, but you know, just gotta, you know, keep a little presence around the house are and you, take off. And they're very happy to have mom leave again. Are you gonna be home on Mother's Day? You know what? I'll be flying home on the red eye from California just to be home on Mother's Day. Yeah, hey, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 I can't wait. That's awesome. Um, can I ask you a little? I know the book is about um, when people pass, we mem remembering them in a positive way. But I, I, I wanted to ask you about September 11th a little bit because if you go down there right now, I mean, you, you know it better than I do. I mean, you, you're in, an integral part of that, actually. I mean, you look at that. Do you know the names? On, uh, do you know a lot of names on the memorial? You know what? It's, it's actually incredible. The names that I know are from the first book I ever wrote, which is about how broadcasters, radio and TV journalists, covered 9-11. And for that particular book, and the reason why I'm mentioning it, not only because you guys are on the radio, Thank is you. because there were, <laughs> <laughs> there were radio engineers who maintained the antenna on top of one of those towers. And when, the, when, when, those, you know, when those buildings came crashing down in New York, that Tuesday, um, those radio engineers died w w with that tower oh, coming wow. down. And so it's part of the story we, we never heard. Um, 
Yeah, and so we decided, I was one of the co-editors of that book covering catastrophe, that we wanted to honor and celebrate the broadcast engineers who literally were responsible for the transmission um, of TV and radio um, that day and before, and to honor their work. And so we donated um, the proceeds um, to the Society of Professional Broadcast Engineers, SBE. I'm sure you guys are probably Hmm. familiar with them. And so we wanted to honor them and their commitment, because those guys are behind the scenes and really make radio work, right, and make TV work. And so um, those men, um, and they were just men, um, I'm not excluding women, but in this particular case, they were men. Um, They're the unsung heroes. They were responsible for people getting the news that they needed in the New York City area. Wow. By the way, just a little side note, a little uh, tidbit, one of those antennas was built here in Ocala. I did not know that. Yeah, I, uh, I was married at the time, and my wife at the time worked at the company that made them, and we went to the to the uh, observation deck, and, and you had to get your binoculars to see the label on the antenna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you, in other words, I was looking the wrong way. Everybody else was <laughs> focusing the binoculars out to the city, and I focused it inward to see the label on one of the antennas. <laughs> what they were saying about you behind your back, you never know <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea. That's so interesting. Yeah, for the for the local people, it was made out in Silver Spring Shores. There was a company called uh, Antennas for Communications. I think it's closed now. Yes, I haven't heard it of it. Part of Microdyne. It was part of Microdyne. So, t- all right, let's talk about the new book. The new book is, yeah. is called Past and Present. Um, well, where did this? I like, I-, I like to call it the Happy Book on Grief. The Happy Book, yeah. It's the happy book Did on you, grief. Really, on grief? It's, it's really, on grief, yeah. On grief and loss, yeah. I mean, really, it's a book that's 100% devoted to how to remember and celebrate someone that you've lost. We have enough books on grief, and yeah. those are wonderful to have, and those are really um, a very different kind of book. This is when you're ready to um, start going through the belongings, and what do you do with them, when you want to start commemorating them, and maybe in integrating them into your life online. Listen, we're all on Facebook. We're all on, you know, Twitter. How do you take advantage of social media to celebrate a loved one and make them a modern, contemporary um, part of your life? That is interesting. Uh, yeah, after, after my mom died, I went to the house that she and my dad had for a long time, and there were so many photographs, and I didn't know what to do with them, and I still haven't done everything with them, but I was scanning them and scanning them and scanning them, and then I made this Facebook thing, and everybody who was, you know, who, uh, not everybody who was my friend, because obviously you have friends on Facebook who aren't really your friends, but people who were familiar with the people, I mean, they were loving these pictures. So uh, I, I think I understand that part of what you're saying. Well, you know, it's interesting. One thing that I love to talk about with past and present is a whole um, uh, chapter about technology. And the really cool thing about using social media to celebrate a loved one, whether it's Mother's Day coming up or, you know, maybe it's the anniversary of their death or their birthday or whatever it is, is that if you post a picture online of that loved one, if they passed away before the digital era, seeing them pop up in your Facebook stream is really heartening. It's kind of lovely, but the added benefit of that, if you proactively ask your friends on Facebook to not just look at your photo and like it, but to proactively ask them to share their memories of your mom or their memories of oh, your Oh, that's a one, cool idea. Then you literally get this dialogue going, and you might actually hear stories about your loved one that you've never heard before, and isn't that awesome? All right, I'm copycatting that. That's a good one. <laughs> I, I like that one. Well, there's a lot of things that, that people have achieved in their life because you're talking I – I haven't read your book logically – uh, we didn't get it yet. So with that said, I know about, let's say, Einstein, for example. We know about him. Nobody talks about his death, we know why, how he died, who was around him. When he, but we know his achievements. Is, do, you, do you touch at that, uh, on that at all, achievements of people? I- yeah, you know what, I think it's a really important thing to do, it, particularly when you have children. And so the way that we share memories of loved ones, it can be about their achievements, and clearly, of course, it could be about their failures, too, because kids learn from those stories, you know, as well. I think the real lesson here with past and present is not to be scared to bring up someone in conversation who has died, because once you start oh, yeah. mentioning their name, once you stop mentioning what they did in their life and what they achieved, 
that's kind of when the story actually does end. And so if you don't want the story to end, yeah, you have really. to figure out ways to bring them up in conversation. And storytelling is really a very, very low-hanging fruit opportunity. We will continue after the break. Uh, Allison Gilbert is our guest. Her book is called Past and Present, P-A-S-S-E-D, if you're looking it up. Keeping Memories of Loved Ones Alive as we uh, get close to Mother's Day. I'm sure this is um, something you're all thinking about if you've lost your mom. And maybe those of you who haven't, you'll embrace your mom a little bit more. We'll take a little break and be right back with Allison Gilbert. Brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be partly sunny and warm today. Thunderstorm in parts of the area Thursday afternoon, the high 86 at the coast, 92 inland. Fair skies Thursday night, low 65 inland, 72 at the coast. For Friday, sunshine mixing with clouds, a shower with thunderstorm popping up in the afternoon, the high 87 at the coast, 93 inland. For Saturday, partly sunny, high 85 at the coast, 93 inland. From the Florida Weather Center, my meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Now attention passengers for flight 1370. The plane has been delayed at its departure point and will be at least two hours late. We apologize for any inconvenience. Are you serious? It took us over an hour to get here, two hours going through security and getting our tickets, and now we have to wait another two hours. Yeah, it's beautiful here, but we're inside this overcrowded airport all day because the plane is stuck in bad weather. This is the last time we ever do this. When we get back, we're going to Cal Aviation and getting our pilot's license. Yeah, we've been talking about that long enough. It's about time we did it. Then we could just fly ourselves and never have to deal with this mess again. Right. No long lines, no full body groping security, no baggage checks. Not to mention never losing your luggage. Remind me again why we haven't done that? Well, we're idiots. Oh, right. Uh, attention all passengers for flight 1370. It looks like the plane is going to be delayed a little bit longer. The airline has lost the pilot's luggage. Isn't it time you got your pilot's license? Call Ocala Aviation today. 352-861-7484. That's 352-861-7484. Hey, you earned it. Call today. All right, 60 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Allison Gilbert is on the phone. Her, her book is called Past and Present. Allison, we had a, uh, a local notable person who died, and I was asked to do uh, to say something. I don't know if you call it a eulogy, but I was asked to say something at his memorial service uh, for those local people. It was Bruce Mozart, the photographer. And, and I was thinking to myself, Bruce was such a fun person that to say something that was just so sad, I, I just thought, you know, we had a really good relationship. He was, I mean, he lived a long life. I think it was 90-something. Mm -hmm. So I knew that he would, you know, I don't know if you can see from the other side or not after you die. I don't, <laughs> there's no way of knowing. But I thought if he can see me, I want him to hear something that he's going to chuckle at. So when I wrote my little thing that I said... Of course, I, I said things that were his accomplishments, et cetera. But then I, I had a little story, and I can't remember what it was, and it wouldn't matter now anyway. But my point is, I did it purposefully so that there would be a little chuckle, and there was. And and I don't think anybody minds a little chuckle at at a at a eulogy, or or even ten years later, if you're remembering somebody. Oh, I think it's so welcome. Why not laugh and smile and reflect on somebody and then celebrate them? It doesn't have to be really the whole point of, um, at least for my book and what I wanted to accomplish, is make something that can be thought of as being sad. Of course, there's elements of sadness when you lose someone. I'm certainly not dismissing that. But to get to a point where you embrace one word, and the word that I really would love your listeners to remember, I know it sounds so crazy to say it, is the word and, A-N-D, and. If hmm. you can embrace your life now and move forward, be happy, be invested in your family, be invested in your career, and look outside and enjoy the sunshine, and remember those people who you once loved and really enjoyed having a part of your life and honor what they still mean to you. If you can do both, you're on your road to true happiness because oh, experts yeah. actually say, yeah. this is so interesting, this is fascinating, grief experts actually say that those people who do proactive remembering of their loved ones, who actually take moments out of their day, or not every day, right? Clearly not every moment, but you take the opportunity to embrace that and word, to do things that are in celebration of your loved one, you actually end up being healthier and happier in the long run, as opposed to someone who just kind of cuts himself off. You know, you just helped me make a decision. Oh, my God, that's oh, great. Oh, let me tell you about this. We have a friend whose mother died a few years ago, and she was cremated. 
and he wanted to spread his mother's ashes. Now, our, our friend is, uh, has Down syndrome, and he's 55 years old. He lives by himself, uh, but he's got Down syndrome. So his, he's got his mother's ashes in a heart-shaped box, and he wanted to spread them in the river. Well, it's illegal to spread them in the river. And everybody said, well, do it. Just do it, you know, co covertly, whatever. You know, don't, don't let anybody know. And I said, no, he wants to videotape it. So then I said, oh, gosh, you, you know, we have this casino boat that goes out onto the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> Why don't we take the casino boat? Well, is that appropriate to take mom's ashes on a casino boat? Well, you just remind, I mean, she was a party lady. She loved, she would have oh, loved, yeah. she would oh, have yeah. loved to go out on a party boat, on a casino boat. So I think you helped me make that decision. So hopefully he's listening, and if not, I'll tell him later on. International waters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How we can gamble. Yeah. You know, the one thing that you touched on, probably without even knowing it, is that one of the key ways to celebrate a loved one's memory, and one of the most healing things you can do, is do things in connection and in community with others. And mm. so a lot of times when we, we remember our loved ones, uh, what makes us sad sometimes is that we kind of do it alone and mm. it feels very isolated you, know, you feel isolated and you feel like you're the only one who is you know thinking about that person and so from what you've just described and there's many more ideas like that in past and present is like doing it with your friends and doing it with your family because when you celebrate someone's memory together you feel stronger oh you just reminded me then new orleans yeah. When, when someone passes, I mean, they really celebrated going down the street, yeah. with, playing with the with the instruments and the umbrellas and the dancing. Yeah, you know, yeah, that is some party. <laughs> right, right for that individual, yeah, for you know. Sure. And if you weren't educated to the culture, you would think there's a party going on down the street. You know, you just fall in line and come come to find out that someone had passed, but they're celebrating it, and that's when I first I seen that many, 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 <clears throat> many years ago. It was very unique. And, and yeah, enlightening. You know what? There's, yeah, I, I I totally agree. In fact, um, there's another celebration that um, I mean, it's only similar because it has a celebratory tone. But uh, you know, Day of the Dead, um, and you know that cultural tradition is very very rich in Mexico and many other you know parts of Latin America. And yeah. in that particular tradition, you celebrate the dead. You don't do it in a way that feels you know morbid and just so down, and you're kind of alone with your thoughts. You reach out to your community, and the entire you know neighborhood is involved. You know, wow, in that particular wow. case, the entire country in Mexico, for example, it's a national holiday. So do you go down? Town to the, the memorial site and like would you feel inappropriate like yucking it up with your friends like oh man there's there's john's name remember him he was so much fun it seems like everybody's so somber down there at, you know at all, at all times it's a very you're speaking about the national september 11th memorial yeah. in the city is that yeah. what you, yeah. you know what i think there's a a time and a place right so there is a time where it's absolutely appropriate to be you know somber and clearly i'm not advocating um a a a a, a mental state where you're in perpetual you know perpetual you know glee and clearly that's not time getting at right, and right. you know there's also a time and a place where, you know if a loss is fresh you're really not in that mode no you're yet not ready of, yet no you know and so that's very raw and so i really said there's a part of the book really in the back where i acknowledge having been through loss myself i've lost my mom and my dad and aunt and uncle and i've had a lot of loss in my life and when loss is new um you're not ready for many of these ideas. And in some cases, to be honest, like you don't even want to like make dinner. Like that even feels kind of too hard at some point. Like just things kind of feel overwhelming. Right. Well, did you ever, ever you're ready, yeah. You ever go to a funeral and after the funeral they have like a reception at a at a at a restaurant or something and everybody in the family goes there. Yeah. And they eat and they and they're together. And then then it the atmosphere changes. From the so solemn mass and and, and the and the hearse and the uh, cemetery and all that, then they go there and they I guess they celebrate, yeah, yeah. but not in a New Orleans style. But you hear laughter and, and they remember. It. And is that what you're looking for in your book? You know, I think I think that's a really important 
part of it. It's really the permission to share stories and to feel comfortable talking about someone who's passed away. You know, many times we feel like, oh, when do I bring him up again? When do I talk about her? I don't want to make other people uncomfortable. But once you break through that, um, it's clearly much more helpful to be able to seamlessly integrate that memory into your ongoing life. And so the trick is how, mm. right? The trick is that's how it, you yeah. do that. And, and so that's what I tried to focus on with past and present, which is 85 ideas, literally practical, creative, innovative, different ideas for how to remember. And the one thing I'll say, which is actually kind of interesting, and then mm. you touched on it a little bit when you talked about what happens immediately after a service. So in my point of view, and I'm wondering if you agree, that when someone we love dies, people kind of know how to lend that initial support. They really know how to be good friends. They come to a funeral. They may go to a shiva call. They may go to a wake. They Mm -hmm. may bring you dinner. They may lend support. But this book is really about the vacuum that happens later when everyone goes home. And you're still remembering your loved one. It's not like you miss them less a year later or six months later. You kind of are still in that place where you want to reflect, but then this book is about, well, how to do that. Yeah. Do you know one, one little way that helps when there's little, little children around? They, 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 <laughs> they, just, they just brighten up everything, don't they? They're running around, they're playing, and they're, they have no clue that somebody's sad. It's just, you know. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, where'd Grandpa and Grandma go? Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Kids are awesome. Yeah. Uh, Allison, give us some information so we can get the book. Uh, do you have a, I know you have a website because I went to it, by the way, and I'm looking at it. It looks like you've got some uh, free things you can read right on the website. It's, uh, f- uh, let me tell the listeners, it's allisongilbert.com, and it's spelled exactly as it sounds. Um, how else do we get the book? Um, you can get it at a local bookstore. You can get it on Amazon.com. Just search past and present. And it's a little tricky, right? Because you're right, past is spelled P-A-S-S-E-D, like past. Mm-hmm. That's a little play on words. So past and present is the search term for like an Amazon purchase. But yeah, anywhere that books are sold. And you have a list of your signings where you're going to be somewhere? Yes. Yeah, so on the website, there's an events and schedule tab, and um, there is going to be an event actually in the Orlando area coming up. And just I'm only one person. I have been able to put it on my website yet, but what? look for that. So that, <laughs> that is going to be added. It is going to be added because, you know, who can stay away from Florida? Do you know the I date? I can't wait to get down there. Well, what um, you're doing on the plane? you got nothing to do on the plane. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will definitely let you know when I'm in Orlando. I'd love to uh, meet you guys in person. It'll be fun. Oh, that would be awesome. Uh, we had this story this morning. I want to squeeze this in real quick about this uh, uh, memorial down in a county next to ours where if you go there with your smartphone, you can go to this <laughs> website, and it'll give you the biography of the people whose names are on the memorial. It's a veterans memorial. And I thought, isn't that a great idea? You know, you... So let's say you go to a cemetery, right? And you put somebody's name in that you see on a headstone. And on your, on your phone, it'll say, oh, you know, John Smith, he, he worked as a janitor and he, he had four children. And, you know, wouldn't that be cool to, to be able to, to know a little bit about the people? A little bit of a story tell. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And by the way, while you were talking, I was like, oh, come on. You can't remember when you're going to be in Orlando. So then, of course, now I remember, <laughs> and I'm sorry that I forgot. So it's going to be Saturday, October 8th. I will definitely be in Orlando. And then around there, I'll be adding more events, because right now I just have one. And okay. I'm going to be adding more events around the uh, Orlando area. So I will definitely um, let you know and hopefully let your listeners know. Saturday, October 8th. Okay. Very A- good. And uh, 85 85- ways that we can do things that we can do uh to help remember our loved ones and and and, yeah, ce- and celebrate them ideas. celebrate them yes. right and have fun doing it and really feel stronger and more connected and just put a smile on your face and go forward with your life enjoy the sunshine the florida weather have a great time and celebrate those that you really miss do you talk to the graves i go i'm going to on mother's day i'll probably be at my mom's grave and i'll probably be talking to her do you do that do you talk to the grave uh, I just talk to them. To, uh, they, to, to them. My parents were cremated, so I talked to them. To them. Oh, yeah. Right. right, yeah, right. I scattered them on the in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, so. You've got a great story, too. Yeah. About yeah. having done that. Um, so. Allison Gilbert, thank you so much for being on the air with us. Good luck with the book. And I, I just love your positive. I mean, it just. M, M, what's the word? 
emulates from your voice? Whatever the word. Radiates from, radiates from her voice. Yeah. The energy radiates Thank from you. her voice. Yes, yes. Past and present. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Allison. All right, we will be right back. News Radio, I'm Carmen Roberts. The U.S. kicks off the year with the weakest growth in two years. The gross domestic 